so we're just going to start all over again. Well, not all over again, but we'll start where we left off, doing the driver scan. And thanks to the magic of television here, we I already did this so I can show you what the driver scan um, would look like. So these are all the drivers that are being currently that are currently loaded right now. As you can see, a few of them. The first one that pops out should be this one, Hacker Defender Driver dot um, one hundred. So once again, this thing has some pretty good hooks into our system here, and we didn't see any of that on our when we were just doing some searches on our victim machine. So this thing is probably also in memory as well in um, the registry as well. So what we could do is we could do a hot, like we did in the first video, do a hive list and then once we get the virtual address of the registry settings that we want, the registry key, um, hives that we want, we could do a what's called a hive dump. And so let's, I won't, um, this one also takes a while so I won't actually run it, but I will show you what it is. So let's do this. I did one for the system. <coughs> and get, <coughs> excuse me, give it the offset. <coughs> and then what we want to do is we definitely want to output this to a file because it is a very large thing and it would just so you, you would it wouldn't make any sense to really put it standard output. You can also search for keys, specific keys, with the print keys command and then with a parameter of dash uppercase K and then the key you want. But since we're not exactly 100% sure what we're looking for, sometimes it's better just to um, dump the registry hive that we want and then look at from there just doing a, um, just a keyword search. So this would be the parameter that you would run. And like I said, I already have the system, I already have it saved off somewhere, I'm just trying to find it. Here we go, so here's the system hive.txt, and what we can do is just do a search for hacker, and we see it here in this Windows registry key. And what this means for safe boot is when you run boot in safe mode, generally it means it's not running all the necessary, uh, running all the extra DLLs and modules that Windows normally runs, it's just running kind of more of a bare bones system, but what this means is that Hacker Defender will still run in safe mode, which is definitely not good, because that's usually one of the quicker ways to try and deal with a possible infection. You see it's also in the network as well. So if there's any back doors, it'll run, that means try this out, the ESE will run as well. And we can also see it in the enum root um, key section of the registry. And that's usually reserved for legacy non-play plug-and-play devices such as CPUs, BIOS, um, network adapters, and printer drivers. So obviously this has some. Um, it's probably just trying to obfuscate itself even more by putting it somewhere that people don't normally look. So definitely not, uh, definitely not a good sign. So you can actually go through all the registry hives if you wanted and see if there's any more uh, settings. We're not going to do that, but you can you know do that for your cases. Gonna pause that here, and then I think the most telling of of these is the process explorer ex executable dump, which is known as oh, just weird that sorry. P R O S process explorer dump, and this will actually dump the process um, that we give it. So we're going to give it the process ID of 16684, and then it'll dump the process that um, that process and put it into an executable for us. And this only grabs, um, doesn't grab, it just grabs the executable, doesn't grab the Slack space that was in, that was um, found with it as well. If you want to grab the Slack space, that's a different command. And I think it's dump directory. I, I can never remember to be 100% sure, but let's let that run. And this is definitely going to be the 100% sure sign that this is, oh, huh, that this is a this is a bad file. Now, honestly, for something like this, I don't know if you would go this far in depth. You might just try and you know do this do this step right after you see the the, the sketchy processes running after you did PS list. But I kind of want to show you guys the the depth of things that you can find in memory. So there's 1684, 
And now if we go to the P drive, there it is, 1684, and then there we go. So this was the try this bad exe, and ABG found this um, to be bad based on heuristics. So now what you could do, instead of just putting it there, is you could output it to a thumb drive, and then you can upload it to virustotal.com, and that will go through the multiple AV engines out there. There's, I, I think there's at least 15 or 20 AV engines listed on the site, and it'll tell you what they would find this as. So it's just a, a good indicator of if one AV finds it bad, especially based on heuristics, heuristics, it could possibly just be a, a false positive. However, if it's something like all of them are saying this is bad, then you have a pretty good indicator that it is bad and you should um, probably get rid of that file as quickly as possible. So now let's do the other one, which is 464. Um, sorry. <laughs> I was uh, I actually did this before and um, I thought I was recording and it wasn't so now I'm just now I'm just paranoid. This is now like the third time I've done this. So, <laughs> like I said, if anybody knows any really good um, screen recording software, that would be uh, that's free. <laughs> that would be really really helpful. So let this run and there it is. We'll go back to our C drive here and four six four. And it should, there we go. So this even calls it backdoor hacker defender um, dash C. So now we have multiple threats. So now I'm just going to remove all of these ones. So I, like I said before, one of the things you can do is virustotal.com, and you can even, if you just had a hack. So, okay, they're all gone now. So now Windows won't know it anymore. Excellent. So another um, plugin that you can run is Timeliner, and this was written by Glita. I'll put a link to her um, in the actual blog itself. And if you um, if you read Helen Carvey's blog or if you look at the Sand stuff, um, Sand's blog, they talk about timeline analysis a lot. And that that one focuses a lot more on um, usually doing for dead box forensics, um, seeing what what interesting Windows artifacts you can pull from the actual hard drive and then put it into a timeline and then look at it in Excel and then focus on like a possible time point or look for a certain file and then from there you can see what actually happened um, actually on the Windows system. Did it go out to another website? Did it pull down any more files? You can look at the prefetch to see if it ran any executables. Um, did it make any registry changes? Did it alter the um, any files in any sort of way, and it's a really good, um, really good tool. And I highly suggest you go out and take a look at some presentations that Rob Lee has done, um, or any of the things that Helen Carvey talked about when he's doing uh, registry timeline analysis. Really, really interesting stuff, and it's amazing what you can find with it. So we're not going to let this run because this will take a while. It just took me overnight to actually finish um, the timeline. So I will just quickly show you what this looks like in um, a version of Excel. And this was in OpenOffice, actually. If this was wrong, I don't know. Oh, let's just, just put it here. So here's Hacker Defender. And as you can see, it has a lot of information. Registry settings, PE, timestamps, um, threads that have been opened, and things like that. So it's, it's pretty impressive the amount of information you can grab. Luckily, we have, I already did some culling, and, and sorry about the coloring, but this is the information that has to do with the Hacker Defender and the try this that exe. So you can see the processes being run, the process ID, the subsequent socket being opened for 1684, which we could think possibly is um, associated with um, Interpreter. We see the registry settings here that were modified based on the Hacker Defender uh, keyword. We see some more timestamps down here, and we see the suspicious DLLs running here for um, our malicious program. And like I said, these ones normally call um, IP Helper DLL. You can also there's some spelling differences as well, so um, that could also be a big clue that something is wrong. 
Um, so I definitely suggest you, if you have the time, to let Timeliner run on your memory dump and take a look at what you can find. It's actually quite impressive. You see here, this is the command line that was run to actually get Hacker Defender running with the exe and then pass the parameter of the hxdef100.ini. So all in all, it's actually pretty impressive in terms of what you can find. And I don't want to say it basically, you know, takes does all the other commands that we did because you know you're always going to miss something, but it definitely adds a little bit more perspective to your case. So I highly suggest you go out to Belita's website and grab the extra plugins that she's created. A uh, very useful to the community. So um, I think that's it. Sorry guys, if um, if I missed a couple steps, I, I like I said, this is just my third time doing it because I don't know what happened before. But um, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to, to put it on the put it on the blog or um, anywhere. And if you have any you know suggestions of things I could have done or things that I missed, uh, once again, this is a learning experience for everybody. So please feel free to add it. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.